Okay guys, so in this video, um, I'm going to explain the CRC uh, peripheral and it uh, stands for cyclic or cyclic, however you want to say it, redundancy check. Um, and I made a little post about it on my blog, so if you want to read this, uh, you can go ahead and check it out. But I'm also going to go ahead and explain it in this video. Uh, and in, in my blog, I actually give an example for the STM32L0 microcontroller as well as the F1. And obviously the code and all that great stuff. Um, the code on my blog is going to be a little more involved. Just because I kind of did a little more there because I had time to think about it and all that stuff. So I'm not going to make an hour long video here. <clears throat> now what is what is that? What, what's it do? What's it mean? If you look at this, uh, <clears throat> there's a great app note by uh, STM, and they explain w what this is. Shoot, it's app note 4187. Oh, redundancy check. What did I say? Redundancy code? I don't remember what I said. Anyway, so you click redundancy check. What this does, it's, it's a way of validating your data. So, for example, if you have, uh, let's switch screens here. If you have certain data that you want to transmit from, you know, point A to point B, and there could be that somewhere along the line your data gets corrupt. So, if you're sending a message to this a certain machine to keep operating normally, and if your data gets corrupt along the line, and the corruption just so happens to match a command that tells the machine to blow up then you're screwed right so you need um, a way to, to check if your data has been corrupted and this is one of the ways you can do it and what it does it's, it's, it's an algorithm basically and I'm gonna go ahead and explain it here and you don't have to worry about if you understand it or not because um, the microcontroller is gonna take care of it for you but you can implement it in C. It's not difficult at all to implement it in C. However, if you look here in the in the in this actual app note, they tell you this is what it would be like if you implemented um, in code, right? It would take about seventy thousand clock cycles for the um, you know for the algorithm algorithm to to compute. 78,000 clock cycle versus only 1,200 just about uh, clock cycles by letting the hardware do it. So it's been implemented in hardware. So I mean that is a huge difference, right? So definitely don't implement it in C. I mean you can for fun, that's great. But if you're really going to use it, um, go ahead and let the hardware do all, all the grunt of the work, right? So let's get into what the actual algorithm does. And I actually have, um, I'm going to read this right off of my blog. All right, but you can look at it here too. So this is, um, this is what it does. You have this initial CRC value, right? In this case, uh, and in this example, it just happens to be <clears throat> all ones, right? FF. And then you have your input data. So it's going to do some calculations to your data so that at the end you get a certain value that's going to be unique to your data if at any time along this entire process one single bit of your data changes or is corrupt then that final value is not going to match right um, what I'm trying to say is that you're gonna run this algorithm on your data before you send it and then you're gonna send your data to the other side to whoever's receiving you're gonna send your data along with this number that we're gonna generate and then once the data is received on the other side they're gonna get that number that you sent and they're gonna get your data then they're gonna run that same algorithm that you ran on your data to see if they get the same number if they get the same number then your data is intact if if they get a different number and it doesn't match the CRC check that you sent then that means somewhere along the line your data was corrupt or maybe your CRC data was corrupt something was corrupt the point is at that point you ignore that data because the CRC check didn't pass right so I hope I hope that made sense if it didn't go to the blog I explain it much better there. who knows okay so there's an initial CRC value here is FF 
and then there's your data. The first operation it, it's going to do is going to do an XOR operation, right? So this is uh, from here to here is an XOR operation. Let's see if we can make this big, uh, make this bigger. Okay. So yeah. So from here to here, it's just XORing your data with this value. After that, it's checking the most significant bit, right? If the most significant bit is a zero, all it does is left shift by one. So as you can see here, the most significant bit is a zero, so it's left shifting by one. Then it looks at the new data after it's been shifted. Is the um, le most significant bit, is it a zero? Yes, okay, so it left shifts again. Then it looks at it again. Well, is the most significant bit a zero? It's not. This time it's a one. But when it's a one, it's going to do two things. One, it's going to left shift it also. But then after it left shifts it, it's also going to XOR it with a certain polynomial. Right? So it's going to XOR it with a certain number. That polynomial in some STM32 microcontrollers like the uh, L0, you can choose what polynomial you're going to XOR it with. In the F1, you can't. It does it. It just I don't know what number. Uh, actually, it tells you what number it uses in the um, in the reference manual, but you can't set it. So, all right. So if it's a one, it's gonna left shift and XOR it, and then it starts again, looking at the most significant bit. Is it a zero? Yes. And left shift zero. Left shift. It's a one. Okay. Well, left shift and XOR it. So when does it stop? It stops when you've gone through all your bits, right? So if here we have an 8-bit uh, 8 8-bit data, it go it stops at once it's gone through all your bits. So it's keeping track of how many times it's left shifting. So all these right here, the quote unquote byte bind index, it's keeping track of how many times you've uh, left shifted. Obviously, once you've shifted through all eight bits or how many ever you know bits your data has then it's done and that last value is your CRC uh, your CRC value your check value so then if I were sending this data oh hey kitty say hi she's like what the hell are you talking about hey baby anyways so once it gets this value this is the value that you're gonna send with with your data right so if I'm sending this input data right let's they let's say this means hello and I'm sending that to to somewhere else I'm also gonna send that this value right here this last value and then the other side they're gonna run this exact same algorithm on my data and if all the bits on my data are the same if nothing is corrupt then obviously they're gonna get the exact same value but if even one bit is corrupt they're gonna get a different value therefore our final values, our CRC values, are not going to match. So that's basically how it works. And what's cool about this is, oh, and if you understand uh, little flowcharts better, you can see it here, right? The flowchart for that whole algorithm. What's cool about this is that in the STM32 and the L0, there's not almost nothing you have to do, right? So. A lot of this, most of this code is just non, nothing related to the CRC. This is to, to print messages on the screen, which I set up. This is the init code for my CRC. You don't have to do anything except enable it in the AHB enable register. That's all you have to do. You go to all the RCC, you enable the CRC enable bit, right? Uh, hell, let's look at it in the data sheet if you want. <clears throat> HB, where the hell are you? There it is. And where are is this here? Here you go. Six. So you go to this bit and you enable it and it turns on the CRC engine. Right there. Clock enable for CRC. Then let's look at the CRC registers. Here it is. It's such a small peripheral. It has one, two, three. It has three registers. One of those, it's completely useless to us, right? This input data register can be used as a temporary storage location for one byte. In other words, you can store a byte in there. It doesn't say that it's going to go to the freaking CRC. It, it's just an empty register. I don't really know why they did that. The other um, register is the control register, 
which there's nothing to do except this reset value right here this is this will if you put a one here at any time during that uh, CRC stuff it resets the calculation that's all that does so in my initialization code I turn on the CRC and then I put a one in there just so that you know I know that it, whatever data was there before is reset so that's how I initialize it so the, how does it work um, you go to your data register so here's your data register so 32 bit rate uh, register the way it works is that when you write data to it it will run the uh, CRC calculation and when you read data from it it'll return the that final CRC value and that's really it um, there's no and it has a uh, sort of it does something where it kind of I don't want to say it hangs but it won't let you read from it or write a new byte to it until it's actually done doing the calculation so you can write data to it but again remember these a lot of these registers have other shift registers so you can write data to it the data will go to another shift register where it's going to do all the calculations and then it won't let you write more data here until that's done because remember it has to come back and give you the answer the point of it is that you don't even have to worry about it because it's gonna happen so fast you could do it back to back and nothing happens so look at what I've done here there's several ways you can do this right for example here I have one I'm doing it one byte at a time right so here I'm putting I'm resetting the the whole in this line I'm resetting the whole thing right so I go to the control register and I just I put a, a one in there no wait a minute what the hell am I doing here oops where is my data sheet yeah I don't know what the hell I was thinking there by putting just a one in there that doesn't do much it should be a one shifted over to CRC data register reset value. What was I thinking? Oh, I'm sorry, because I'm looking at the wrong freaking register. I was looking at the register map. I'm looking at this. I'm like, what am I doing? Okay, so here is the actual reset bit in the control register. So I put a one in there to reset the um, the whole peripheral. Um, that threw me for a loop. I was like, what the hell was I doing? I'm like, I put a one in here, but this doesn't do anything. That's the register map. So yeah, you put a one in here, and it resets the whole thing. So that's what I'm doing. I'm putting one in there. I'm resetting it. Oh, let's go up here. And then I'm putting a byte, and this is a dummy byte, which I have defined to just C1. So it's just one byte, eight bits. And then I'm printing, obviously, that I just put one byte in there, and then I'm printing the value it's going to return. And then in the next line, let's go to my data register here. So I, and I'm only putting one byte, which is going to be just these bits, and it's going to run the whole calculation on it, right? Another way you can do it is if you have more than one byte, you can do one byte at a time and get each value for those bytes and add it all up. Or you can do one byte and then the other one and then the other one because as you're writing new data to it, it's, it's keeping track of the current value, right? Or another way you can do it, which is the third way that I did it, is if you have, uh, you know, let's say those four bytes or whatever, you can do one byte here, the other byte here, the other byte here, the other byte here. It doesn't matter how you want to do it. The point is, it's going to run a calculation. So long as the other way, the other side, the trans, or the receiver, or whatever, as long as they do it the exact same way that you did it, then um, you, your values are going to match. So, and that's all I've done here. At first, I just used one byte. I put it in there. The second time, I loop through an array that has four bytes in it, and I do one byte at a time again, and then I just do the actual reading after my last byte, okay? 
or I can just put all my bytes together and put them into the register min maximum of four bytes obviously because it's a 32-bit uh, register put all of them together in the register at the same time like this or so 32 bytes and then get that value no matter what even if you do put um, just one byte in there your answer the return is always going to be a 32-bit uh, number right so I'm going to go ahead and compile that nothing to build because it's already there let's upload it to the chip and we're going to look here let me get this into perspective so one byte four bytes and 32-bit word and it's just gonna loop so this is the number it gives me when I put just one byte in there and here's the number it's giving me when I put uh, four bytes but one byte at a time and then I read the value at the very end and then this is the number where I'm just putting all four bytes in there at the same time and then read the value um, so yeah so then this is the number I would send to the other side along with my data um, so that it can run the the check and see if, if it matches I hope that made sense and like all these crazy videos where I'm just rambling sometimes uh, go to the blog and take your time read through it you have questions ask or leave a comment or just you know forget about it forget about me kitty kitty she's gone